The shift is back, baby. What is going on, Francisco Rojas? My guy, Nick Kirkshaw, right beside me as we sit here on a beautiful spring night. It's just, a, it's, it just feels like spring. And it feels even more like baseball when we get the top prospect. One of the top prospects in Major League Baseball. The, one of the, you know, one of the biggest, most exciting uh, prospects in a while on the bump this Saturday. Paul Skeens has been pulled up, Nick. Or pulled up. He's been called up, Nick. I'm excited. See, I can't even pronounce words. Nick, oh. how you feeling, bro? You ready? Listen, Paul Skeens got called up, man. How can I you not be ready? Oh, oh, I, I got to You know, I'm going to let mine grow. Oh, no, so, no, we well, can't have that. For the Skeen, the Skeen stash. How about that? What, the you stash. I'll, I'll, I'll I'm down. Saturday. I'm down. I'll look, I'm like down. Such a, I'll look like such a, no, nah, I didn't want to say it. I don't even want to say it. I'm going to look like a clown, dude. You can do it. You can do I it. Never, gonna... Go ahead. I've never tried it. I've never you done the try mustache. It. You should try I've done this. I've done the beard. Yeah, I've done the little chin thing for a while. Right. I've never done the stash. Fully. Right. Fully grown. I think you should try. Do it, do it for the shift. All right. The skein stash for the shift. How about that? The skein <laughs> stash for the shift. Grow it out, baby. Grow Let's it out. It. But... Let's do it. I'm for it. Yeah, I'm you know, it. honestly, all right, so we got a we got a fun show for you today. We do have to talk about the Luis Arias trade. We never really got to got to talk about it. Um, it's been a few weeks, but we're back. We're back. Um, but we got to talk about the Luis Arias trade. Um, the Philadelphia Phillies, obviously, most of you know who are listening probably know we're both Phillies fans. Um, but we got to talk about, you know, team that has the best record in Major League Baseball now. And could they potentially dethrone, uh, you know, the uh, the, the very, uh, I think the Braves have won the NL East the past five years. Uh, we'll talk about that. Can they dethrone uh, the Braves? Um, this year after the start that they've had, um, Pete Crow Armstrong, very interesting. He uses helmet to stay on the bag a couple of days ago. I want to talk about the legalities of that place. Should it be banned? Maybe even talk about the oven mitt. Should that be something that's banned as well? Talk about that. And then we got to talk about prospect of the week, stat of the week. Definitely curious to see who Nick comes up with this week since we're obviously going to be talking about Paul Skeens today. But so that's where we're going to start now, Nick. Paul Skeens. What are your thoughts? What were your thoughts when you initially heard that he was getting called up? And look, Saturday, Chicago Cubs, he's up. What are your thoughts? Listen, that question is ridiculous. The fact you're even asking me, what were my thoughts when he was called up? Were what were my I thoughts? I don't know. I don't know. It's about, about, it's about damn uh, time. Uh, it's about every time, time you say that about a prospect, it does uh, not go well for them. Ellie last year, Jackson <laughs> this year. This is not good. Hopefully hey. third time's a charm. Go ahead. Hey, 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 hey. Listen, listen. Jackson, it, just give him some time. He'll be back. Yeah. He'll be back. He'll be fine. And look at what Ellie is, this year. Look at Ellie this year. What are his numbers in, 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 uh, in, in the minors now? I wonder if it's gotten worse since he's gotten <laughs> gone back down there. Just give him some time. Listen. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough game. It's a tough game. We'll be fine. Ellie looks fine this year. Just took him a little while to get rolling again, right? Uh, Ellie looks good. But we're talking about Paul Skeens, man. Stashing. Stashes for Skeens, man. I, that's what I'm going to be doing. Oh, uh, listen. I, I, I'm excited. This guy is nasty. Absolutely nasty. I mean, I, I could just go down the list. The fastball, uh, it's ridiculous. Guys think he's throwing like 110 up there, it feels like they yeah. say. Um, that, that, that's how ridiculous. So like, if you go to MLB pipeline, I, there, the highest grade you can give something is an 80. He has an 80 on his fastball mm -hmm. an 80. He should have a 90. That's how lethal his fastball is. I, I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, listen, it was the first overall pick last year. Um, number three prospect in the game. Uh, the guy's a unit six feet, six, two thirty five on the bump. Uh, 60 feet, six inches away, seeing that mammoth, a big man, six feet, six. Guys, guys, ridiculous. National player of the year for LSU. Um, Listen, he's got an 099 ERA down in AAA, 45 strikeouts, 27 in the third innings. Um, Listen, he's got the fastball. We all know about that. His slider is pretty lethal as well. Uh, and then we got the splinker. I, Francisco, I don't know if you know about the splinker. Uh, if the listening audience doesn't know, it's a splitter and a sinker. It's a, a pitch that 
Uh, Skeens has said that happened by accident. Uh, it's got a mix I think, to I it. Duran throws that. Johan Duran from yeah. Minnesota. He throws that. It's nasty. It's yeah. it's ridiculous. So you know, he said it happened by accident. The splinker, the way he throws the ball, um, and and it gets it gets hitters out, man. It, it's it's pretty crazy to see what he could do. I mean, going back to uh, the slider, he's got a whiff rate of forty three percent. I mean, this guy, he's got nasty, nasty stuff. And like to be in AAA at his age. Early on in his career, already the dominating at the level, like literally just complete and utter domination. Triple A hitters are eight for 52 against the fastball, 20, I believe, 26 strikeouts, if I'm not mistaken, if I can read my own handwriting. Um, I, it's the guy is legit. Um, I'm excited to see him against big league hitters now. This is like, obviously, this is a real test. You, you were fantastic against triple a hitters let's see against the big league hitters his stuff is there it's ready to go Let, let's see him put it to the test man i mean everyone's been waiting for this guy to get called up it's like all right all right let me look at my watch it's it's time for him to, to, to pitch against the cubs on saturday francisco yeah yeah man I, i'm i mean this is what we've been waiting for right this is what we've been waiting for uh since you know he was the number one draft pick you know overall last season this is what Every single, uh, not just pirate fan, but major league baseball fan has been waiting for, you know, you know, since really since, you know, even last year at LSU, I was watching some of his LSU highlights, man. And he was, I mean, it's, 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 it was really, it was really unbelievable what he did at LSU, what he's done in the minors. Um, I guess the one thing I, I'm just really intrigued. I mean, it's simply put, I'm just, I'm really intrigued to see how his stuff's going to play against major league hitting, you know, at, at a, uh, in a, you know, in a, in an actual game, you know, we, he did, he did pitch in spring training. Yep. Um, but this is, this is for real this time. This is for real. He's going to go up against the Cubs lineup. Uh, that isn't, isn't too shabby. You know, you got Bellinger there. You got Patrick wisdom. You got Christopher Morrell. Like there that you're going to face, you're going to face big time hitting now. This isn't just going to be the minors. Um, and uh, I was even listening to the athletic, uh, their wind up podcast earlier. Um, and Katie Wu, the uh, athletics Cardinals writer was, uh, was talking about how, you know, triple a isn't what it used to be is it isn't as good as it used to be. Um, so, uh, and that's where he's coming up from, from right. Triple a that's where he's getting called up from. Yeah. Yeah. Triple a. Yeah. Right. But he even started, did he start triple a or no? This Sorry, year, yeah, I believe he started Triple A. Yes. Okay, year. I just want to double check. Either, either way, he's coming. Yeah, he's coming for Triple A. Yep, every start was a Triple A. Um, so, I'm really interested to see um, how his stuff's going to translate because, and, and the guy is also uh, he's pretty, you know, mature for his age. Because I was reading uh, something earlier, and he was talking about how like he realizes that he can't just have the fastball. I think you mentioned this with his arsenal, the fastball and the slider. He's at, he's throwing the splinker too. Now I think, uh, the curveball, the change. Yeah, exactly. He's throwing he's those five, pitches five too. Pitches. Yeah. Five yep. different pitches. So we're kind of on the, the same wavelength here. I'm really just curious to see how that stuff's going to, uh, going to play. I mean, that fastball, that fastball, is something to behold, dude, something to behold. So, um, I'm really interested to see just how his stuff is going to play at the major league level. And, uh, you know, people are, you know, people are talking about, you know, the type of excitement that we're getting from him. And I know we kind of talked about this with Jackson holiday, uh, when he was called up, but I'm getting, you know, Strasburg vibes and, um, and, uh, who else, who else were some big time pitchers to come up, even like, a you know, Mark Pryor, Kerry Wood back in the day. I know it's a little bit before your time, uh, just to say, but, uh, you know, Guy, guys like that where we're, uh, we're all we're all stoked to watch even like I know Kopech hasn't necessarily panned out like that um so far you know because of injuries and whatnot but you know there was some hype for for Kopech when he was uh called up to the White Sox uh, a couple of years ago so that, that those are the type of, of vibes I'm getting from it and I love that as a baseball fan I, I love that I love uh the excitement the 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 hype around this type of pitcher because me i'm a pitching nerd when it comes to this stuff i love hitting too but i'm really you know pitching nerd at heart so i i, I mean i can't wait to see skeins 101 100 mile two two mile power fastball to go along with that splinker really watch you know i mentioned johan duran before the, the I, i'm i'm really intrigued uh to to watch skeins go out there and see how that stuff plays man because it's going to be a different animal but i think he's got the type of moxie to come up and have a pretty, at least at the very least, solid start. I can't see him, uh, you know, going out there and just getting 
absolutely uh, murdered in his <laughs> no. first start. You know, I, I I don't get those vibes. I don't get the Jackson Holiday, you know, strikeout, you know, getting uh, getting destroyed the first, you know, 30 at bats. I know you're just dying inside right now listening to that, uh, but it's just the truth. It's just the truth. So I don't see Paul Skeens being that type of player. He doesn't have. He's got the. He's got the lion's heart, bro. You don't got the Jackson Holiday. Uh, who, who is the soft person from uh from Wizards of Waverly Place? Not Wizards of Waverly. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> who was the? Uh, who was the Tin Man? Was he soft? Tin Man? Yeah, I guess. Man, right. I don't know. Was Jackson tin Holiday, Tin Man, Paul Skeens, the Lion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I. Th- that's that's the type of that's the type of comparison you get on the ship, baby. That's the type of comparison you get. And Paul Skeens, Lion, Tin Man, Jackson Holiday. Uh, so I remember remember what Paul Skeens did to Jackson Holiday. You remember that, Nick? Yeah, I remember in yeah, spring training. I, I remember. I hey, remember. Cry about it. You want to cry on air? I struck out. I'm not gonna cry about it. Listen, I'm a Paul Skeens fan. Yeah, oh, sure you are. Sure you are. Well, maybe, we'll maybe uh, pick my guy everybody. Jackson against Paul. I, I can't yeah. do it. You're an Orioles <laughs> fan. You're a uh, you're a Reds fan, and you're a yeah. Phillies fan. You're a fraud. I get it. So I'm getting <laughs> I'm going a little long here. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, after all that spiel, there, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm stoked for Paul Skeens. It is a home start, I believe, which makes it even more exciting. Yeah. Hopefully, Pittsburgh, their fans, pack the house. I want to see it. I want to see them pack the house. It's like they packed the house way back in the mid 2010s when Kutch was helping them get into the playoffs yeah. and stuff like that. I want to see that type of packed house for Paul Skeen's debut, Nick. Listen, Nick, they go ahead. They got listen, the Pirates have a lot of good young players, but do they have like the amount of noise that's around Paul Skeen's, right? Mm-hmm. It, I don't I, I don't know if it, it, it's is it it's like kind of McCutcheon-esque. I'm not gonna say it's McCutcheon. But like it's McCutcheon esque, the noise around Paul Skeens. Like everyone's mm-hmm. away. And I hope the Pittsburgh faithful on Saturday shows out. Uh, I believe it's the second game of a three game set against the Chicago Cubs. Um, mm-hmm. So listen, it's a, it's a division game. They're starting him against. Um, so it's going to be fun. I'm excited to see see him throw, man. I mean, I, I think yo, you kind of summed it up perfectly. Like we want to see him against big league uh, competition at this point, right? We want to see him against big league bats. Um, Hey, division game against the Cubs, perfect way to start. Let's see what he's got. Um, you know, I, the guy throws a, a ridiculous uh, fastball. He's got the splinker. The slider's nasty. He's mixing mm-hmm. in the other pitches. Um, but it's just like now you got to see it against these big league hitters. Yeah, you can do it at AAA. Um, you know, you have the 099 ERA. Fantastic, right? It's great. Cool. Um, but what are you going to do against these big league hitters? It, it's a different game, man. Like the minors, like – yeah, Triple A is close, but it is not. It is not. It's not the same when you get to the big leagues. And we got Joe Von Alfer checking in. Most exciting Pirates pitches is Garrett right. Cole. Oh, that's what, I was trying on. to think of somebody. I was trying to think of somebody. somebody have, have, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, this is gonna be fantastic. So uh, Skeens is gonna he's gonna pitch on Saturday. We're gonna finally get to see it in a major league uniform. Uh, you get into Skeens uh, jersey. You're gonna wear that one since you get every. You other. know what? I might, six, I don't, six, guys a unit yeah i, I mean, don't like, like, look to be fair like i'm just gonna be real with you i'll be real with the audience like i only buy and this is the truth i only buy jerseys for people that are solidified right like i have the randy johnson right. you can say whatever you want to say i have the randy johnson i have a uh, i have a pedro martinez 99 all-star game red Sox. Mm. you know what i'm saying I got it. We can look at football. I got a, a Falcons, Michael Vick. Like I get solidified guys, right? I got the, I got a uh, Jerome Brown, you know, rest in peace. But like I, those are the type of jerseys I buy. I do have a okay. trout angels, but you know, trouts, trout's solidified trout forever. Yeah. So, um, and I have a Bryce Phillies Jersey, but you know, Bryce is Bryce. Um, but I, I will, I, if anything, I will get a Skeens Scherzer. You okay. know what I mean, right, I'll get fair. a Scherzer. That's fair. Cause I, you know, I can't spend 150 for the guy to, what if he comes up and he's terrible or if he gets hurt, but God forbid, and you can't stay healthy or anything like that. Not trying to, you know, knock on wood. Uh, but that's just my that's my method to my madness. I know I, I I am madness, but there's a method to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, semi yeah. method, semi yeah. method, semi right, exactly. Uh, also, shout out to Jovan for commenting a few minutes ago. Paul Skeens, Jared Jones. By the way, yeah. uh, Mitch Keller too. This is going to be like this is potentially going to be their monster top three. You know, for years to come. Skeens, Jared Jones, Mitch Keller. Um, Mitch Keller got that extension, I believe. Um, so they're 
the Pirates are really excited about those three. You know, keep Brian Hayes there on offense. So they uh, they believe, unlike the uh, the Marlins, they don't believe in their young guys. You know what I'm saying? We'll talk about them in just a short moment. Um, but before we get yeah. to that, also, we have our, we've been trying to do Twitter polls uh, for yeah. our show. Our latest Twitter poll for today's show. I don't know how Nick feels about this. I feel like he's very skeptical about this, as he should. <laughs> Uh, by the end of 2024, who will have lasted the longest or how will lasted longer in the big leagues in their first year in the majors? A, Paul Skeens, or B, Jackson Holiday, who is back in the minors. Who will have mm. – uh, it's kind of weird because we're comparing a pitcher to a hitter, so it's technically you can't – I don't know how many games yeah. he play and starts. I, I don't know, but I think you probably get the gist. Who will have lasted longer? Who will have a, a longer stretch? Um, Nick, I don't know. Do we want to give our answers? We're going to let the you know let the audience. Uh, I mean, I'll know. give my answer. Right, it, go ahead, go ahead. I want to hear give, yours. Actually. I'll give my answer. I'm going to go Skeens. I think a lot. Obviously, it's a little different because it's a pitcher. Um, but just Jackson's struggling right now, and, and um, you know, I, I think you don't want to rush the kid. Leave him down triple A. He's struggling triple A right now too. So you gotta you gotta just wait it out with with Jackson Holiday. So that's where I'm at with him. Paul Skeens, I think lasts longer. I think the stuff's extremely dominant. I think that's where I, you're gonna see a longer stretch of him. You know, throughout the rest of the season, right? So I think Skeens, you know, he gets a bunch of starts throughout the year. They're not gonna kill his arm, but. I think um, I think he lasts longer. I think he'll last the majority of the season and may probably till the end of the year. So I wouldn't be shocked if Skeens is here for the rest of the season. Okay, look. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes. Uh, Nick, I'll just be straight out with you. I had a, I had a turkey burger. <laughs> I had rice and chicken for dinner. Okay. That's what I had. And okay. I, had uh, I had a little bit of coffee ice cream afterwards. So that was my dinner. What about you? There you go. I had uh, I had tails tonight, chicken tails. Excuse me. I had them. They were pretty good. You never had tails? Tails? Look that up. Yes. Chicken tails? Oh, I don't. God. What What is a chicken? It's tail? chicken. They're giant. They're like giant chicken tenders, essentially. Bone like a boneless chicken. wing that's gigantic, a giant tender basically. With this like, is what I know. see when I look up chicken tail. You know what I'm that's that's not it. That's not it. Chicken not, tail, bro. What are you talking about? Tails. They're called yeah. They're called tails. So that's what yeah, I had. Yeah. It's chicken. Did you invent? I had chicken. Or... No. Oh, no. I see. This okay. is well known. This is well known. Oh, um, that that's what I had. I had that with fries, and then uh, I had some mint chocolate chip ice cream. How about that? Mint chocolate. How about chocolate that? Is good. Oh, like yeah. this one, like this, like this, like this. Uh, nah, not really. No, no. I'll, I'll really. send you a picture. Oh. I'll send you. A picture. Okay. All right, uh, and then we you can you can post it on uh, Twitter. Yeah, All I, right. will. I will. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, but uh, so first topic here for uh, the meat and potatoes, man. Like, I don't think anyone saw this coming. You know, I I, I think I texted this to you, and I I, I believe I I just I, at, at first like I was thinking like is there something I'm missing? Did like did I not read something yeah. that maybe that this has been like kind of brewing and that we were all going to see this coming. Then I realized like, no, the Marlins just don't think that they can win this year, which is whatever, but I mean, it's pretty early in the season. Um, Luis Arias, Nick traded to the San Diego Padres. I believe it was for three prospects. I could be wrong. Could be four, but I'm pretty sure it was three, right? Three. Yes. Yes. All right, three three prospects. No, it was four. So, it was four. It was four. It was four. Well, yeah, three it prospects, and then the yeah, no, it's four players, three prospects, one right-handed pitcher. Okay, um, I mean, I'll just go first here, Nick. I, I just kind of want to talk about general thoughts, takeaways from the trade. I mean, it's kind of like the obvious one, but let's just get it out of the way. I'll get it out of the way for us. Like, what are the Marlins doing? Like, I even if they might have been correct and that they they weren't going to compete this year. But you still could have had Arise, Jazz Chisholm, um, Alcantara, Yuri Perez. You have your nucleus, your core there for the future. It's not like Luis Arise is 34, 35 years old. He's 27. Um, you got years of 
his prime there, right? I mean, usually a yeah. player's prime is usually end by like 33, 34 years old. You, 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 you got him there, man. You got him there. He's been, uh, he's had back to back batting titles for both leagues. Um, I, it doesn't really like, okay. In one aspect, you can say like, well, the Marlins prospects, uh, their farm system, according to Fangraphs, is like bottom five. And the Padres have a like 11th ranked farm system, according. Maybe this is different now after the trade, but this is the general, at least from what I've read. Um, there is that side to it. But at the end of the day, it, uh, you got a solidified, you know, hitting machine there. The modern day Tony Gwynn, I don't... It, it didn't really make sense to me, Nick. Luis Arias is a very good player. I, I, it doesn't make sense to me. That That's my first takeaway. What are the Marlins doing? Um, I, you can go. I'll talk about what I, how I see this from the Padres' point of view after you're done. But, like, I, I don't see what sense this makes for the, for the Marlins. It's just another uh, – they're just going to – they're, now they're going to probably ship off Alcantara, ship <laughs> off Yuri Perez. It's just going to be like the Marlins back in the day. No more Yelich. No more Stanton, uh, no more um, third player I couldn't think of. Uh, but you get the picture. It, it doesn't Marcelo make Zuna, another player. Zuna, it doesn't exactly. matter. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, I, I don't get it. I mean, this is a rise is what, third team since 2022? I, I mean, what what the heck? Right. This guy is a hitting machine. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, listen, the Marlins are as confusing as ever. I mean, listen, they went through the whole era of Derek Jeter at the helm, right? That was a nightmare. They get to the playoffs last year, had a pretty good roster. Um, They've had, they have some good young players. They get a rise. They go out and get him. And then they move them already, already. They're already moving them. Um, Listen, I know they, they don't have a great farm system and they wanted to add some pieces um, to, to the pipeline. Um, like they, they get Dylan head, uh, who was number six on the Padres top 30. Now he's number five on the Marlins. Like they got three guys that they add into their top 30 prospect. I think all of them, if I'm not mistaken, are top 11 or higher. So, I, I mean, yeah, great, but they're, they're unproven. I thought you were a team that was trying to be in the mix. I guess they don't see a path with the Braves and Phillies already being so dominant at the top. I don't know. I just the, the plan for the Marlins has always been confusing to me. They get all these young players, they come up and then they trade them right away. They get a guy like Arise, they trade him right away. Like it just doesn't make any sense if you're the Miami Marlins at this point. Arise is one of the best hitters in baseball to move on from this quickly. This, this guy's been on three teams in, in just a couple of years now. Uh, it's it's wild. It's absolutely wild. Uh, good for the Padres uh getting a bat back over there, which is huge for them after losing Juan Soto in the offseason. They get a freaking awesome bat in a rise here yeah great i mean they they can afford to lose some prospects especially what they gain from Juan soto trade etc cetera, etc cetera. they have young pieces um the padres are trying to stay in contention too uh, it's a good move for the padres i think and getting a guy like that and giving up a couple of a d de- of good prospects but you know you never know what, what, what you're gonna get out of those guys right so it's worth it for the padres to do it especially since they have one of the better farm systems in baseball. So, um, it, yeah, it, this was a puzzling. And then the fact, the timing of it was weird too, Fran. Yeah, it's a blockbuster like, in May. Like, yeah, what do we like? You're not, you're not, we're not waiting till July trade deadline in August. You're doing it now. Yeah, like it's April. Me, yeah. It's been one month. They're already, right. they're already out one month into the season. So, um, wow, wave the white flag already, Miami. Good job by you guys. I, I feel sorry, especially since you know they're they're having the big the fans let bring things in. You can have more fun in the stands, like right. trying to build a culture there. Boom, you're trading one of your best players. Uh, you know it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, nothing. No, Miami fans like what? I mean, besides Chisholm, like ha, what do they really have to go to the ballpark park right now? I got I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something here, but like I mean, it was like a rise. It was. Jazz Chisholm, at least you guys got those guys in your in your lineup every day. But um yeah. now, I mean, who else is there? I mean, there's I don't I don't really know. Just being honest, man. Um, yeah, Tim Anderson's there, but Tim Anderson hasn't been good at all. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm a Tim Anderson guy, but not good at all. Um, uh, you know, it just doesn't doesn't really make any sense, man. From the from the Padres point of view, uh, you know, I think it's a decent trade for them. Um you know, I, I still think, you know, if I'm a Padres fan, I still want them to develop, you know, try to 
you know, try to develop a future. Uh, but, you know, credit to AJ Preller um, for getting one of the, the top bats in the game. Um, I think they're a team that's still trying to trying to win now. I, I know that a lot of people think about the the, uh, the Dodgers, think about the Braves, think about the Phillies now. Um, and, you know, the Padres have kind of been like the I – don't, I don't know if laughing stock's the word, but, like, Padres have just been like the, yeah, hey, whatever you guys do, you could just never do it. Whoever you get, whether it's Bogarts, whether it's uh, Soto, um, you know, whoever – Machado, whoever it is, it's just, it just hasn't worked for them. They did get to an LCS a couple years ago. Give them that. Um, but – you know, it just last year you get all the big, big names. It just doesn't work. But you know, give them credit. They're gonna, they're gonna try this year still. They were going to anyway. Um, but it's still, a, still a, it very uh, big time lineup. You had to rise to the, uh, to the mix now, and um, they're gonna, uh, you know, they're trying to go for it. The old season like, had a good start to the year for them um, and the staff. Uh, so yeah, um, it's um, you know, you get a blockbuster. Out of nowhere, never really see these in May on May, uh, whatever it was, May 5th, May 4th, whenever it was. Um, never see it too often, Nick. But Padres are still, still going to try to win, man. They're still going to try to win. Can they do it? Probably not. You know, the Dodgers, no. the D backs are there. Uh, probably not. But um, good content. Uh, you know, the modern day Tony Gwynn is a Padre, pretty ironic. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's what most people are calling them. Um, so, yeah, it's uh it's a good good thing from the Padres side. That that's all I got on Nick. Anything else to add about the trade? Yeah, I, I mean listen, the Padres are sticking right around five hundred to start the season this year. Um they they add another bat. I think Tatis even called a rise uh to uh the, the new Tony Yeah, I'm pretty sure. yeah, yeah, I think it was Tatis said it too, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty funny. Um but yeah, I, I listen, good move from the Padres perspective. You give up a couple of prospects, okay, you can live with that. Uh, I, you know, they're, they're in the top 10 in the Marlins system now. Fine. Um, the Padres have guys that can unload and the, you know, the, they're trying to go for it, right? They're trying to win now. I know they, they moved on from Juan Soto in the off season, but they had to dump some money. I get it, but you go out and get a guy like a rise. Uh, yeah. Why not? Why not? If this becomes available, you can give them up for a couple of prospects. Go ahead, do it, do it. And Preller's going to do it. You know, he's going to swing big and here we go. Here we are. So we'll see. So we'll see how big of a move this is as we get into the dog days and then down the stretch in September. Facts. By the way, aren't you? You're not hot in that hoodie. It's hot as hell, man. We got the air kicking in here. It's uh, fantastic. So I'm comfy. Uh, I am in a comfy mode right now, friend. Yeah. I mean, you're, just soft. you're just soft. You're just soft. You're soft like the tin soft. man. You're just soft as like Jackson Holiday. I'm not soft. I'm not gonna stand up. That's that. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not standing up. <laughs> I got the hoodie on, and I'm not standing up. Okay. All right. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I sure. I guess. I don't know. You're like you're like Gen Gen Z or whatever. So I, I don't know if we we're on the same we're on the same wavelength, wavelength sometimes, but sometimes it, it just you're you're it just yeah. goes it goes yeah. over your head. <laughs> it goes over you. My lingo goes over your head. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So uh, Philadelphia Phillies now Nick have the Ooh. best record in baseball. They finally lost the game today. Uh, to the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, one one thing people were, you know, especially here in Philadelphia, were talking about a lot, um, but it felt like nationally there was being talked about too. Is this a year that, you know, the Phillies could potentially dethrone the Atlanta Braves, you know, for that division, uh, you know, by the end of 2024? And right now, Nick, look, the Phils are hot. Phils have won what, like 18 or the last 22, somewhere around that. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like they're, they're hot. They have the best record in baseball still, um, as far as I know. Uh, they've been great. They've been really good, all facets, rotation, uh, lineup. Yes, they have, uh, you know, unfortunately, Trey Turner is not going to be here for about five plus more weeks. Um, he's hurt uh, with the hamstring thing. But still, that lineup stacked. Still, a lineup stacked, which show, proves how good they are. Now, Nick, the Braves do not have Spencer Strider for the rest of the year. No more Spencer Strider. Still have a stacked lineup. Ronald Acuna, I think, will come around at some point. I think. And maybe that offense will finally really get hot. Um, But no Strider. Offense still great. Bullpen's really good. Are the Phillies now, the the start they've had, and they, they have moved past the Braves for first place, are they clearly the favorite to win the NL East. Could they now run away? I wouldn't say what run away, 
But are, are they in your minds? No doubt about it. Phillies are going to win the NL East. How do you feel about them? No. Not no. I, I can't slam dong. No doubt about it. Oh, the Phillies are going to win the division. It's May. The Braves are a good team, man. I'm not. They, they've been the division winner over the past few years for a reason, right? Like, this is the, the Phillies are trying to get over that hump to win the division this time around instead of having the wild card spot, which honestly, who knows? According to the Braves, they don't like having uh, the time off before yeah, the frauds. divisional round, they're which frauds. is pretty funny. But uh, no, I, I'm not going to make them a slam dunk. The Braves are a very good team. They're only two and a half games out. They haven't played as many games as the Phillies either. So, no, I, I listen. The Braves over the past two series, listen, they went one and two against Seattle, got swept by the Dodgers, have only scored 14 runs in their past six games. Okay, in those two series. All right, fine. It's May. You're going to go through the ebbs and flows of a season. It's it's a long year. I, I think it's going to be a battle to the end. I think the Phillies – Will definitely, it'll definitely be way closer than it has been over the past few seasons. Like by the time like July, August comes around, it's like, all right, who's battling for second place in the NL East? I don't think that's the case this year. I'm not going to hand the Phillies a division yet. I, I can't do that in May. No way. Not with the Braves. I get Spencer Striders out. I get it. They have a fantastic roster. They have a lot of depth. Um, and when this lineup gets going, they're like all the virtually unbeatable, especially in the regular season. In the regular season, playoffs, that's ah, a different story. But the regular season, ridiculous. Rakuni is going to come around. You're talking about the reigning MVP here. They're going to come around at some point. Unless injuries really get to them and the injury bug hits the lineup hard, this is going to be a competitive race till the end, I think. I think it's going to be really close the way things are shaking out this year. I think the Phillies have elevated themselves. I think the Braves are still really, really good. I can't give it to one or the other right now. I think it's going to be a battle till the end. But the Phillies... I say right now, slight favorites for sure. For sure would be this my slight favorite in, in the least right now. The way they're playing, especially with guys going out like Trey Turner missing some time. Yeah, I, I'd say they're the slight favorite. I can't slam dunk it though. I can't say, yeah, Phillies are going to win no matter what. Strider's out. Who cares? No, no, no. No, it's going to be close. Relax. It's early. I love the start the Phillies have had. It's one of their best in a very long time. I'm going to give a slight edge to them, but it's going to be a wire-to-wire finish in the Senate, at least, if things if, if teams stay healthy. Yeah, I, I guess you're just not a Phillies fan anymore. You're more of an Orioles. <laughs> you're a Reds fan. I get it. That's fine. Oh, I'm realistic. I'm yeah, realistic. Nah, you're not realistic. Oh, you, my you know. gosh. Oh, Ellie, come up. You're going to be so good. Oh, Jackson, come up. You're going to be so good. Now you're going to ruin the career of Paul Skeens. I, I can't believe it. Can not believe I, it. I will uh, say uh, on the radio show I do on Saturdays, uh, we have a guy who, who does some stuff at LB Network, the sports book consigliere. Right. Uh right. he he basically without he said I wasn't a mush, but he was calling me a mush. Mm. So maybe as far as what goes. Anything. He's talking about game six. I go to game sixes, they lose. Sixers go yeah, to game sixes. Yeah. I went to Phillies game seven, they lost. <laughs> I I go on the on the Jackson holiday train. He gets sent back down. Ellie so, De La Cruz it, falls apart last year. I mean, yeah. I'm not on a good streak here, Fran. Yeah, I, gotta you gotta stop. I don't know what you gotta do. You gotta do <sighs> some something else, man. Like, I haven't gone to a game sporting events. I haven't gone to a Phillies game where they've well, won this year. Well, you should like <laughs> you know what you should do? You should attend like you should go to like a Mets game Go when they're Mets playing game. random, some like the Mets versus like the White Sox or something. So the what the, the White Sox can sweep the Mets and you can be oh. there and be like, ah, oh, you know, get the Mets to. I don't even know how that would actually work because, like, uh, maybe you would help the Mets somehow. I don't know. Maybe the White Mets will start winning so more. Maybe I'm and doing the Phillies what. a favor here. Okay. So this might be I'm a good thing what? by saying, oh, I'm not going to give it to them yet. All right. Oh, okay. And then they oh, a little reverse psychology. Yeah, but you're wrong. The Phillies should be the clear <laughs> favorites. And here's why, Nick. I think it's, it comes down to one thing. I will give the edge to the Braves offense, especially with Trey out for, for five weeks. And that's a theme here with the injuries. What it comes down to for me, Nick, I think the Phillies starting pitching is miles ahead of the Braves now. Without Strider, I think they are miles ahead starting pitching. Bullpen, you could maybe it's a pick them as far as the bullpens go. Braves have a really good bullpen. Phillies have a really good bullpen. I think the Phillies starting pitching, and I know they've been really good to start the year. 
but I really don't think it's a fluke. The Rangers is this good. I think Rangers going to be like yeah. a top five, top 10 Scion candidate. I think Nola is going to have a really good year. I think I, I, I feel about with Nola, I, with Zach Wheeler. I think Zach Wheeler, I, I think he's going to Cy Young this year, man. So him, him a Ranger. It's going to be him a Ranger. Yeah. Christopher Sanchez rebounded nicely the other day. Um, Taiwan Walker. I mean, Taiwan Walker actually hasn't been bad to start the year. I mean, yeah, he kind of had a couple of, uh, you know, homers he's given up the, the end of starts. But besides that, he's honestly been pretty good coming back from injury. And then you got Turnbull there. If you need somebody to to go, to go in there, that's some depth. And he kind of helps the bullpen out. Um, I, I Ronaldo, Ronaldo Lopez, dude. I, I, what, what am I supposed to say? I know he's he got, he's been at an incredible start. I don't know much about this guy. Like I know he's he's been in the big leagues a long time. Pitched for the White Sox way back in the day. Hasn't been good. How, do, how much am I going to trust this guy? Charlie Morton's only getting older. I mean, yeah, Morton's been pretty good this year, and maybe he'll have a good year, but I, I don't know. It's getting older. Chris Sale. Chris Sale can't stay healthy, baby. We've talked about the for Braves rotation, man. I I just I I am I love the Phillies rotation, and I really feel like it puts them over the top for the Braves yeah. this year. Man, I'm not saying for years to come. I'm just saying for this year because Strider will come back eventually, and Strider is going to be you know continue to be one of the best uh, you know. Uh, he's starting the trend, obviously, with him and Skeens, the mustache and everything. Um, I just like the Phillies rotation a lot, man. That that's the that's really the thing for me is the rotation is the rotation, and uh, that that is that's just how I feel, man. I really feel like their starting five is just too good, and it's going to give them the division this year. Cannot wait to win the division. Can't wait to go to the World Series, I ninety five World Series, Phillies Orioles. We'll be oh. there. Every game, you yep. Like, you'll wear your you'll wear your Diamondbacks jersey to game one, game yeah, two, that makes game sense. three. Right, right. <laughs> no, I'll get a Cal Ripken jersey. I'll wear that. <laughs> Listen, I said I gave the Phillies a slight edge right now. For sure, they're the favor. There's a slight favor for me. I can't count the Braves' offense out. I can't do it for the division. We're not talking in a playoff series. Playoff series, I give the edge to the Phillies a hundred games over because of the rotation. 100 times over, you got Wheeler, Nola, Ranger. Top three destroys destroys the Braves. But during the regular season, they still have a really good roster. And they got and I I'm I would not count the Braves out of making a move at the deadline. I, you can't count them out with that. That could come. And they could add some pitching, add some depth at the deadline. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rule that out. They have guys in their farm they can move if they need to. Not gonna count them out. So I listen, I do think. Philly should be the slight favorite to win the division right now. But to just count out the Braves like they're the White Sox or the Marlins, I can't, I can't do it. I can't, oh, 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 it's what you're saying. That's the way you're talking. But, yes, no, I, I, I give them the slight edge, but I think it's going to come down to the wire. I think it's going to be closer than you think. The Braves are still a really good team. I know they're missing Strider. It's a gigantic loss, not counting them out fully. Yeah, I think the deadline deadline's interesting. I think you make a yep. good point there, but I, I just I like the Phils a lot right now. Uh, maybe I'm biased, but I just know. Um, <laughs> I do too. Yeah. They're, they're playing well. They're pitching well. They're playing well. Even with losing a guy like Turner, who was a guy who was one of the only bats that got hot to start the season. So I, I'm with you, but just you know, it's it's May. It's May. It's May eighth. <laughs> okay. So I was rude. I should have done that. All right. Uh, you know this. Uh, Pete Crow Armstrong. Uh, yeah. Cubs, Cubs young guy. Uh, well, this is very interesting. So he kind of like overslid second base. I believe mm-hmm. this was against New York. Um, he overslid second base, but he, he was able to keep on the base by putting his helmet, like kind of like he, he took off his helmet, like right before he slid into second base. And he kind of used his helmet to stay on second base. And he was called safe. I think afterwards, uh, MLB came out and said, well, by uh, like, you know, legal rule, he should have been out. Um, what do you think though? There, there's some very uh, interesting comments that I've seen on social media. What do you think about the play, Nick? Do you think it should be legal or do you think it's like a fun play? You like it? Like, well, what are your thoughts? You know, I'm a big fun guy, uh-huh. but no, this is not, this is not legal. Are you kidding me? He's, he should be out. What are, what are you doing here? I'm going to pull up a picture in one second of this because i i want to i want to show the peeps we don't have broadcast right so i want to show the peeps at least a picture of this oh we can't we can't show the video something up no 
Let me okay. see here. Open image. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. I'm working. I'm working my magic over here on the fly. That's okay. Yeah, you, you always you always get the magic. But it was a, it was a really interesting <laughs> play, actually. Yeah, it was, it was. It was. It was. Uh, I got yeah, it. Okay. We got it. There you go. I actually like the way you did that. Actually, good, <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's kind of a funny. That's play. ridiculous. That is. Look yeah, at that. Can't do that. Did they call? Wait, wait, wait. Did, I forget. Did they call him safe? I think they did. Yeah, they called they called him safe, right? I, bl- I believe they called him safe. Actually, the more and more I think about it, now that I'm looking at the picture, look it's how kind dumb. Of wild that the ump was just like, "Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're safe." Like, I wonder if the ump in the moment. I, I I'm curious what they they must have talked about it after the game or something or that they, they said, yeah, the Ma- Major League Baseball said they got the call wrong. It's a right. It's wrong. And yeah, because- I want to hear what the ump said. I want to hear what he said. <laughs> yeah. Like. Because, like, now that I'm looking at it, it's like, you actually look wild that, to be like, oh, yeah, that's definitely a legal play. I guess you're just not used to seeing that every day if you're an ump. So yeah. maybe he was just kind of taken by surprise, and he was like, oh, wait, what's this rule? Okay, well, he's actually technically still on the base, yeah. so I'll call him safe. So, actually, I won't heckle the ump too much, but it kind of <laughs> looks it, it looks ridiculous at the same time, just looking at it uh, on camera here. It's really funny. It's, it's so funny. Even the broadcast team. I mean, like, this is something you don't see every day. Like, we every year, there's something new we've never seen before. When was the last time we saw this? Someone try this I've never and pull seen this out of their hat. I remember. Exactly. So, I like, I, I don't fault the umpires or the broadcasting or anyone involved to not know, like, oh, we have, I mean, we have the, the mitts now. We, we got the mittens that we can use to slide it on. Why as well use my helmet, too? I mean, yeah. I So, I no, it's, it's illegal. I, I don't like if if it was now if it's on his head and like he's touching his head maybe we should try his head with his like touch the base with his head. <laughs> I feel good. Try that. I uh, that's safe to me because now it's a part of his body. It's all it's 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 correctly on like a hat, right? That's fine. <laughs> But you can't take it off and use it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. The more, like I said, the more I look at that like, picture, the more. Like, I'm what like, if he took know. off his cleat? What if he took off his cleat and put it on the base? That that doesn't count. You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing here? This is bush league. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, is bush league. <laughs> um, well, this actually begs the question before we uh, get to the closeout uh, segment. What do you? How do you feel about the oven mitt? The oven mitt's like technically. Yeah. It's technically, I, I'm trying to think of how large it is, but I mean, it's longer than like it your, is. your fingers. So like, should the oven mitt be illegal, even though it's, maybe should they uh, make changes to it? Because it's technically supposed to be they've used it for protection. But what do you think about that? No, I, I get it. I mean, it's a little bit longer. Like, I mean, it has to be. The whole point, so you don't break your fingers sliding into the base. Right. That's the whole, I mean, that's the whole point. I don't mind it. It looks goofy as heck. Everyone knows how goofy it looks. Yeah. Um, but now nah, I, I don't, I don't, this is a different, this is a different scenario. This guy, he took the, the helmet comes off and he's using it as an extension. The oven mitt is on your hand. Obviously it's a little bit longer than your fingers, but it's on your hand. It's, it's a, a it's equipment. You're not like taking it off and then put, using it as an extra device. Right. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, no, it, the oven mitts are fine. As goofy as they are, the oven mitts I'm in on. Taking the helmet off and using it, that's ridiculous. You should be out at that point. You're not even you're not touching the base. Shout out to Pete Carl Armstrong for pulling this off, though. This Shout out to him. It's hey. actually really funny. Shout I know. It's Pete Carl Armstrong. It's great that it worked. Like, it legitimately yeah, worked. Yeah. Nobody knew what to do. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're safe, buddy. It's like, yeah, yeah. I guess I am. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, awesome. I think John Boy and Jake did, like, a video about it. And, like, they mentioned how, like, he definitely maybe necessarily didn't do it on purpose, but you can tell that he's, he hasn't, that's not the first time he's ever done that. No. Like, it's like, yeah. I've tried, I probably tried this in the minors before. Right, I worked, right. It worked down in single A. Right. Let me try or in, in like, or, or in like practice or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. Spring training game. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. I tried this before it worked. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, let's close it out, baby. Uh, give me, I'm going to give you a stat of the week, you know, cool. uh, you know how the stat of the week goes. Give me your prospect of the week, though. You obviously be talking about uh, Paul Skeens at nauseum so far. Um, give me your prospect of the week. All right. So obviously Paul Skeens, the man, going to start Saturday, but I'm going to switch it from a pitcher to a catcher. Going Ooh. Harry Ford. Ooh. Uh, 
Well, baseball prospect. classic star. Yeah, prospect from the Seattle Mariners. Mm. Um, you know, he's had, listen, he the past like I am going past like the past couple of weeks he's been pretty hot, right? Uh he said he was had a 12 game hit streak. He's hitting the 13 out of his last 14 games. Um, uh, but what's great about Harry Ford when he eventually comes up? I think he's like 34th ranked prospect somewhere around there. He's like, he's like 30 something uh, in, in all of baseball, according to Emily pipeline. Um, the thing about him is he gets on base and he's been walking a lot more recently. Like last year he, he, he walked a ton and that's why I love him. He's a guy who gets on base and is going to be a pretty decent hitter as well. Um, this season he's had six multi walk games. So whether two or more, he's done it six times this year already. We're only in May, um, April 28th. That game, he walked three times in that game. Um, so he, he's got a really nice approach at the plate. Um, he's one of the top catching prospects in baseball. I think he is the top catching prospect in baseball, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the Mariners, they, they got a guy coming up who's going to be fantastic. He's in double A right now. Um, he's had comps to Russell Martin. Uh, as well as Biggio as well. They're the kind of the comps he's gotten. Um, so this is a guy I'm looking forward to. Harry Ford. Watch that name going forward. Love the discipline at the plate. He's got like a major league mindset. He's a student of the game. Watch Harry Ford as he comes up through the ranks, through the minor leagues. Seattle's got a good one. If they don't trade him, if they keep him, they got a good catcher. That might be there for a long time. Okay, by the way, uh, fourth-ranked uh, catcher in baseball. Okay, fourth, uh, according, fourth. To, according to LB.com. But, you know, uh, the, the, nonetheless, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, it's Ethan Salas, uh, okay. Samuel Basalo. Gotcha, uh, yep. Uh, Jefferson, I'm sure you know Samuel Basalo very well because yep. you're a diehard Orioles fan. Um, <laughs> Jefferson Kuro, Harry Ford, and Kyle yep. Teal from the Red yep. Sox. I know um, Teal. Definitely. Teal's going to be nice too. Okay, okay. I like. I love it. <laughs> love it. We all. We all. We always love to get your uh, insight on the prospect. So, um, yeah, Harry Ford, name uh, um, I've heard before, just from the World Baseball Classic. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, excited to see what uh, what he's gonna what he's gonna do. Um, so my, my stat, my stat of the week, I, I mean, it just happened today, Nick. I, we, we got to talk about, I mean, John Carlos Stanton, when he hits home runs, they're not just like, he owns the stat cast era of home yeah. runs. He owns like, remember when he hit that bomb in LA, it was like McGuire. Now it's Stanton hitting bombs out of Dodger stadium. You know what I mean? Yeah. John Carlos Stanton hit one today. I believe I don't want to get it wrong. I believe it was 119 miles per hour. <laughs> um, I'm going to get it real quick because I don't want to get it wrong. There we go. 119.9 mile per hour blast uh, that went up to the second deck. I mean, it literally got out in like two seconds. Like that's how. <laughs> that's what that's what John Carlos Stanton does. That's the type of blast yep. he hits. They're like line drive, but they're like missile, um, missile shots. Like that's what they are. So. John Carlos Stanton, 119.9 mile per hour home run today. Hardest hit ball of the season, all of Major League Baseball so far. Um, and by the way, it now slides right in for Stanton in the top 15 hardest hit home runs of the Statcast era. He owns eight of those. He owns oh. eight of the top 15. It's like he has eight. You know, Tani has a couple. Acuna somewhere in there. Um, Judge has a couple. Uh, the names that you usually know. So, um, but Stanton Nick is just, um, I don't know, man. He's, uh, he, he, when he, when he's healthy, he's hitting these type of home runs. Exciting to watch. He hits the, uh, he's a stat cast, uh, you know, home run darling. Not really yeah. Nice, but... it, it's like, if he's able to stay on the field, stay in the lineup, this is the, this yeah. is what you get. You get a nice product. You get an entertaining player who can hit missiles, missiles, yeah. Francisco, um, so it's about him staying healthy. It's, you know, it's May. Hopefully he can last longer this year. You know, keep it going. Cause you know, it's entertaining as much as I don't want to, you know, give a Yankee props. I'll give the Yankee a prop. I'll give oh, the Yankee a prop. Ah. Here. So, uh, yeah, no, man. I mean, the guy is entertaining when he mashes home runs. It's, it's, it's awesome. The guy just is gigantic. He's a unit and can mash and hits absolute missiles out of the ballpark in Yankee stadium. Woo! My goodness. And his, and his teammate, Juan Soto, by the way, leads the yep. majors in exit velocity this year. It's just <laughs> almost 96 mile per hour. Yeah, man. Uh, Judge is there in third. 
Um, and Stanton, I think, is somewhere. He's somewhere down here. He's 26th, but still 26th. Your boy Ellie comes in at 16th. Oh. My boy O'Neill comes in at 20th. Um, he's he's so. always one step ahead. Yes. Always yes. One How step about this? Ahead. Patrick Bailey in the 12th. That's just wow. 98. Patrick <laughs> Bailey. Cal Raleigh's there at seventh. Okay. Bobby Witt Jr. at sixth. That Connor sounds Henderson. about right. <laughs> Connor Henderson, by the way, I believe it is major league tying 11th home run tonight, which okay. uh, kind of deke Eddie Rosario um, out there in right field. Uh, but anyway, so uh, that's pretty much it for today's show. Um, go make sure that you will follow us on Twitter, especially our uh, our Twitter poll that we um, that we uh, threw out there today. Paul Skeens, Jackson Holiday. By the end of 2024, who will have lasted the longer in the bigs this year? Um, and coming at 80, percent it's Paul Skeens. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, buddy. not not too. Sure. I agree. I agree. All I agree. Right. With agree I did agree with that. Agree you know, I, I respect that. You as an Orioles fan, conceding. No Orioles it. fan here. No Orioles yeah. fan. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, if we're going to the World Series and you're wearing like a Gunner jersey, <laughs> Phillies Orioles World Series. Uh, Serious consequences. Serious consequences. There, I don't make the mistakes you make. Well, <laughs> I, I, well, I, learn. Was... I learn. I learn. I learn. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, from, something... from my elder folk. From the elder folk like you. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't that old, right? I am going to be 30 this year. You are. Big 3-0. Yeah, screw that. I hate saying that. I, I hate I They're hate coming back that. problems, buddy. Oh, I already have back problems. You're, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for the show. Follow us everywhere. Follow him at Nernshaw Radio. Um, you'll just have to go look for my Twitter somewhere because I don't have mine attached to my name. So that's going to do it for another episode of The Shift. We'll be back next week. See you guys later.